I just think it's so fascinating what has happened over the weekend. I remember seeing so much news about Dutton pulling out of this Paris agreement, which is massive news if you yeah, did do so that. So that was Saturday, right? Exactly. But then Dutton clarified that they wouldn't pull out of Paris. So on Friday night, the Australian newspaper published an interview with opposition leader Peter Dutton, where he said that a coalition government would scrap Labor's 2030 emissions target if he's elected at the next election. Now, side note, you might be wondering when the next Australian election is. Hmm. It's sometime before May next year. We don't that's know. That's the latest point. That's the latest cool. point it can be. We don't know exactly where it will be, but we know it soon. And that is why the coalition, who is currently in opposition, is starting to tell us more about what their policies would be if they do get elected. So back to this news. So Dutton said that a coalition government would scrap Labor's 2030 targets because he claims there is, quote, no sense in signing up to targets you don't have any prospect of achieving. Right. So basically he's saying we're not going to meet these targets, so why have we legislated them? So he didn't directly say we're pulling out of Paris. No, and that's the important point, I think, that Dutton didn't actually explicitly say the coalition would pull out of Paris. Those words did not come out of his mouth. But just the suggestion that he would scrap these targets, which have been legislated under the Paris Agreement, led to a lot of speculation that a coalition government would pull Australia out of the Paris Agreement. And that is where these headlines came from. But that is not the case. And I'll explain more in a bit. Because that really is going to get to the heart of what the coalition's policy actually is rather than what it's not. So there's a lot of moving parts in this story. The key part, though, seems to me to be the Paris Agreement itself. That was in 2015. Take us back there and tell me about that agreement. So back in 2015, Australia was one of 196 parties who signed up to this Paris Agreement, which was a promise to limit global temperatures to 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. Now, it was actually under a coalition government that Australia did this, which Mm. I think is interesting in in the context of this conversation. I think it adds a little bit of nuance because that would make it even a bigger deal if the coalition did then get back into government and pull us out of it. Now, to achieve this limit of 1.5 degrees Celsius, the United Nations states that the world must reach net zero by 2050. And just in case we haven't thought about net zero on this Wednesday morning, give me a quick sense of what that is. So net zero means balancing how many greenhouse gas emissions enter the atmosphere against how many are taken out. So the metaphor that people use when explaining net zero is this idea of a bathtub and you need the water to be coming out of the plug at the bottom at the same rate as new water is coming in at the top and you need that level of water to be the same in the bath, that's net zero. Exactly. It doesn't mean absolutely no emissions. It just means taking out the same amount as you're putting in. Now, under the Paris Agreement, the general goal, like I said, is to reach net zero by 2050. So what are we in now? 2024. We have 26 years to get there. Now, importantly, signatories to the Paris Agreement must have progressive targets to cut emissions. So you can't just say, we're going to get there in 2050, you know, we're going to think about it in 2040, we've got 10 years then. We need to kind of show the roadmap, show the working out. Exactly. And it works in five-year cycles. So signatories are expected to have a plan every five years to progressively cut their emissions. And that's where our 2030 target comes from. And I think part of the way that countries and parties keep themselves accountable is they kind of come back together every so often and say, well, how are you going to achieve this and how are you held accountable? So what's Australia's plan right now? So right now, Australia's 2030 target is to reduce greenhouse gas emissions below what they were at in 2005. And that target was set by the Labor government after they got in at the 2022 election. It was a big issue in that election. Massive issue. I think it was widely seen as a, as a climate change election. Now here, it's important to acknowledge that it is a fact that Australia is not right now on track to reach our target. Last month, the government's climate change department revealed that Australia will achieve a reduction of 42% by 2030 at the current rate. So just a reminder, Australia's target is 43%. We're at we're on track to achieve 42%. So that's a difference of 1%, mm. which might not sound like a lot, but of course, experts would tell you that, you know, a percentage is a lot in the context of what it can mean for extreme weather and sea level rises and food scarcity and a whole range of things that climate change impacts. 
Hello, I'm James and I produce the video you're watching. If you're enjoying what you're watching, we'd love it if you considered subscribing and checking us out on our other platforms. It'd really help in getting the word out about what we're doing here at TDA. Thanks very much. And now back to the deep dive. And one more important thing that I was reading about this morning, the Climate Change Authority found last year, Australia's emissions actually increased in June 2023 right. compared to the year prior. So we are behind on this target and there there is no disputing that. And I'm sure whenever this next election will be, it will continue to be a really important part of who gets elected. But one thing that's different this time around is that those targets are now set in Australian law, right? Yeah, this is an important difference because, like you said, the targets are now legislated and they were done so by the Labor government. And that just means that there's more accountability if it fails to meet the target. And it also means that it can't be scrapped unless a new law is passed. So if the coalition government comes in, they can't just say we're not going to do that. They actually have to pass legislation. So what is the coalition saying? I mean, we've talked a lot about what they're not saying. They're not <laughs> saying they're going to pull out of Paris. What are they saying? So the coalition has now clarified that what they're saying is that they believe Labor's targets are not achievable. And so their argument is what is the point of having these unachievable targets if, again, these are their words, you don't have a plan to actually get there. Obviously, Labor disputes that, but that's what the coalition is saying. And the coalition climate change spokesperson, who is Ted O'Brien, he confirmed that it would not maintain the 2030 target if it were elected. So just to be clear, they definitely are planning to scrap Labor's targets. Just one quote from him that I think really paints their perspective. He said, the government, quote, has basically locked Australia into a target without knowing how it's going to get there, how much it's going to cost or who's going to pay for it. And in light of the weekend's news, he also just clarified 100% that the coalition is committed to Paris. And he said that any suggestion that it will pull out is a lie. And he also clarified that the coalition is committed to net zero by 2050. But so that's really interesting, right? So both major parties are saying we are going to be at net zero by 2050. Yes, but the key difference is 2030. Right. And that's kind of what this whole discussion revolves around. In terms of 2030, we know they're going to scrap Labor's plans, but what Dutton said yesterday is that the coalition would replace the 2030 target, but we won't know what they plan to replace it by until after the next election. Right. So basically he's saying that we will go to the polls without knowing what the coalition's plan to reduce emissions by by 2030 is. So basically we are going to get painted with a longer term vision without necessarily understanding the steps to get there. Exactly. So Peter Dutton and the coalition have laid out, the f they've kind of taken the first moves in this climate fight or this round of the climate fight. What has the reaction been? I'll go through a few different perspectives quickly. So Prime Minister Anthony Albanese, he actually held a press conference on Monday, which was a public holiday, and that's quite rare for the Prime Minister to do, but kind of just shows what big news this was. But he showed he was in holiday mode by not wearing a suit. He wore, <laughs> he wore kind of a casual jacket. <laughs> yes. And unsurprisingly, he just completely slammed Dutton's initial comments. He said, quote, Peter Dutton is worse than Scott Morrison on climate change. That quote stood out to me. And then the climate change minister, Chris Bowen, said that the 2030 reduction is achievable. So he is disputing the coalition's line that it's not achievable. And he added, quote, Dutton is giving up on it, but we are saying we're still working to achieve it. Another perspective that I think is worth mentioning is the Greens leader, Adam Bant. He accused both major parties of failing to take the Paris Agreement seriously. And he said, quote, Labor cries Paris crocodile tears while opening more coal and gas mines, while the Liberals don't even pretend to care. When you put it like that, it's a bit of a sorry state of affairs in our politics. But I will actually, on that point, there are so many amazing people working to find solutions. And I think the one voice that we haven't mentioned today is um, climate scientists and the scientific community. Um, and I mean, their position on climate change is abundantly clear and hasn't really moved. But I think that uh, whilst these policy discussions continue, there is a whole cohort of people looking for innovative ways to, to try and divert the course here. Thanks so much for explaining that, Billy. And thank you for listening to that episode of The Daily Oz. We'd love to know what you think. You can leave a comment if you're on Spotify or give us a rating if you're listening on Apple. We'll be back again in your ears tomorrow morning. Until then, have a good day.